But I'll start off by telling you a little bit about uh, myself and my background, and then I'll talk a little bit about the book and just read a few excerpts from the book, and then I'll open it up to questions. So a little bit about me. Is this off? No. You guys don't need it, right? You can hear me speaking. Okay, um, so I am the author of six novels, four of which are for women and two of which are for young adults. This is my second novel for uh, young adults, and the previous one is called When You Wish, which I'm not sure if you guys have this here or not. Maybe, okay, cool. So those are my two YA novels. Um, I'm also a teacher. I, write, I teach novel writing classes for MediaViewStore.com, and I also used to teach journalism at the University of Florida. <laughs> Go Gators, yeah. Um, so uh, I've enjoyed doing that. I've also been writing for People Magazine for nearly a decade, which has been really a cool job. I do it a little bit less now than I used to because I'm into writing books full time. Um, but over my time there, I've gotten to do some really cool things. I've gotten to go to Super Bowls, the MTV Movie Awards, um, I don't know, the Daytona 500, the NBA All-Star Game, just really cool stuff. And I've gotten to meet a lot of cool celebrities like Patrick Dempsey and Matthew McConaughey and Ben Affleck and all these people that you're supposed to have crushes on from afar, but now I can, you know, drool over them in person. Um, <laughs> but it was while working for People Magazine that I got the idea for this book. Um, as uh, Peter mentioned, um, uh, after it was sort of based on an organization in Atlanta called Kate's Club. This was an organization that I got to write about for people, um, I think about three years ago. And, you know, in addition to doing the celebrity stories for people, um, I, I, what I really specialize in for them is doing human interest stories of good people doing good things. So, um, so Kate was someone who was suggested to me as a really good uh, people story. She was a, she's 31 now, and when she was 12, her mother died. And um, during that time, she, she sort of felt like she didn't know who to talk to about it. Her, um, her father, I think, sort of withdrew, it was just the two of them. And she felt at school like she sort of became Kate, whose mom died, rather than just Kate. Um, so when she was in her early 20s, she decided to start an organization for kids who were going through what she had sort of gone through at that age. And that, it sounds similar to what you're doing and, and you know, perhaps what you're doing also. Um, it, it has become a destination in Atlanta for kids who are grieving to come and basically feel like normal kids and, and you know, be able to be around peers and not feel like, you know, there's, I don't know, a, a, not feel like they're defined by this experience, basically. Um, so that really inspired me. I got to spend a lot of time with Kate uh, because of this story. And I got to spend time with some of the teenagers who are in her organization. Um, and that, like I said, that was three years ago. And at the time, I didn't really think it was something I was going to write a book about. Um, but I think it just kind of got stuck up in my head because it was really, it was something that really moved me. I was very inspired by Kate, and I was very inspired by the kids I got to know. Um, you know, because it was just, I think it's such an enormous thing to have to deal with, and they were all just dealing with it with such grace and, I, and I, I, it just, it really, really, really moved me. So I wanted to, I, I wanted to write a book about that. I mean, I wanted to kind of take some kids who didn't have necessarily the parental support that the, ki that the kids I got close to at Kate's Club had had and sort of see what happened if they were left to deal with this on their own. And that's what this book is about. So after specifically is about a 16-year-old girl named Lacey whose father has died in a car accident about 10 months before the book opens. So Lacey thinks that she has dealt with this death and that she's, you know, coped with her feelings. And because of this, she's sort of trying to help everyone around her. In reality, though, she hasn't really dealt. She sort of pushed the feelings down inside. And by trying to help everyone else, she's taken the focus away from helping herself. Um, so it's only as the anniversary of the death approaches, and as a new girl at her school, or I'm sorry, not a new girl, but as a girl at her school, um, loses her own mother and Lacey tries to help, but she begins to realize that she herself needs some help too. And of course there's a cute new mysterious boy named Sam who comes into the picture who sort of helps her deal a little bit. Um, but, um, let me see. Oh, and I also wanted to mention though, it, you know, a lot of people have asked me, and I have my own writing on the cover, but um, a lot of people have said, you know, why is a book about death, you know, such a, a bright, cheerful color? And it's because, you know what, it's not a book about death. It's a book about hope and friendship and love and family and, you know, and, and moving forward in your life. It's, it's not a sad book. It's a book about, you know, something that happens to a lot of people in life. So it's, it's really not, um, it's not sad or depressing as I think some people have, have thought it would be.